Hello fellow YouTubers, Geek Max here again. This time we're going to do a little bit of a, a maintenance video. Uh, so it's about time that I went ahead and rebuilt the rear differential in my low C S C T E. Uh, I've been noticing that it's been real squirrely, so I'm going to put a little bit thicker oil uh, in the rear diff just to give it some extra uh, <clears throat> extra controllability, especially with that new uh, Tekken Pro 4 HD motor. I've got things crazy powerful. So anyway, I've gone ahead and uh, pulled the diff out of the truck. Uh, I've got all my equipment and tools that you'll need laid out. I've got the <clears throat> hex wrench for pulling the screws out of the top of the diff. I've got my uh, needle nose pliers. That makes it a lot easier to get the spider gears out. I've also got my diff oil and I've also went ahead and got some associated uh, green slime. <clears throat> this is uh, like a sealant kind of stuff and I like to put it on the o-rings just to kind of help uh, keep the oil from leaking out. So anyway, let's get started. Um, before I do anything, I just want to let you guys know ahead of time that the screws that I'm using in the diff case are not the stock screws. Um, the stock screws that go in the top of this thing are absolutely terrible and you will strip them out. Uh, you just can't get enough torque on them to really crank down that diff case so that it doesn't leak. So the screws that I have here, see if I can find my spares. are actually made by HPI and from what I hear is they're pretty hard to get a hold of now but <clears throat> they are the see if the camera will decide to focus or not there we go they are the HPI Z449 screws uh, if you can't get a hold of these any 2.5 by 12 millimeter screw will work the great thing I like about these is they have a 2 millimeter hex socket the, one, the ones that come with the stock low C diff are really small. It's like a .05 standard or something like that. And you just, you, you're going to strip them. These are really nice screws. <clears throat> if you do get a hold of these, um, you need four per diff. Uh, so you'll need 12 overall, and they come in packs of 10, of course. So I got two packs of this. But if you can find anywhere that sells, uh, again, a 2 by, sorry, 2.5 by 12 millimeter screw, Try to find it with a two millimeter head on it. That's perfect. You get lots of torque on it and you'll be able to crank down that case so that it doesn't leak. But I just want to show you guys I'm not using the stock screws because they suck. Anyway, so let's get started with the disassembly of the diff. My stuff out of the way here. So just pull these four screws out. By the way, this is all going to be in real time. I'm not going to cut this or anything. That way you guys know exactly how long it takes to actually do this. And I've done this a few times, so I've, I've got it at pretty down. I guarantee you by the end of this, my hand's going to be tired. <laughs> I only got my camera charged <clears throat> to like 40%, so hopefully it'll have enough battery life to go all the way through this. I think we'll probably be okay. My hands are really tired. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, once you've gotten all four of those screws out, the uh, this gear right here on the top just kind of pops right off you still have the case uh, just be careful this part comes off very easily so that's your diff case there all gross and oily and yummy yummy so just kind of set that aside so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to start pulling these spider gears out of the case and then just <clears throat> wiping them off I use my needle nose pliers See if you can see. There you go. I use the needle nose pliers to grab this little cross pin in the middle and just kind of pull out the whole thing. 
And yeah, so there's one set of spider gears and there is the other. And you will get nasty and dirty doing this, so keep lots of paper towels on hand. I've got I buy tons of these shop towels from Costco. They're awesome. So anyway, once you got those cross pins out, you need to pull out the, the main gear at the bottom of this too. And again, I use my needle nose pliers. Just kind of reach in there, grab it by the, the outer edge of it, and just pull it out. And comes right out. Set that aside. Now on the very bottom of this, uh, probably can't see because my lighting is horrible in here, but there's a little cross pin that holds the out drive in place. Just reach in there. Pull that out, little tiny cross pin. Set that down so you don't lose it, and then the whole out drive, the whole out drive will just slide out, pops right out. Now be careful though, because there's a little washer in the bottom of that, along with an O-ring. Do not want to lose those. So I am going to very carefully try to get them out. There's the washer and the nice dirty o-ring. All right. Now that I've got all the stuff out of the bottom of the case, I'm going to go ahead and just wipe everything down. Makes it easier to work with here. Kind of a clean freak. I don't like messy stuff. Now just be careful when you uh, when you clean the, the little o-ring that's down in there because uh, you don't want to tear that Ooh, almost lost my washer there All right, yeah this little o-ring is a pain don't lose this okay got that now the stock discs come pre-filled with a uh, grease um, I don't recommend <clears throat> using oil in the stock diffs. You want to buy the, the heavy duty diffs or the HD diffs. They actually removed a few components of them to reduce leaking and they're also made with tighter tolerances. Um, also, on the, uh, <clears throat> let's see if I get this to focus here. Here we go. So on the, uh, in the stock diffs, there's a little shim that goes between the spider gear and this little square piece on the side. Uh, you do not need that with the HD diffs. You need to take that little shim out. I've already got the HD diffs, so I've already gotten rid of those. But just make sure if you guys are rebuilding with the HD diffs, do not reuse that shim. It'll probably cause it to bind and you'll uh, cause a lot of premature wear on your diff. I'm surprised mine's actually in as good a shape as it is. I mean, I've been racing this thing for, I don't know, probably four months now, solid every week. And uh, it's still looking perfect shape just about. So, anyway, just continuing to uh, take things apart, clean them off, set them aside. Uh, be sure not to drop any of these little square pieces. Man, I can't tell you how... Uh, how many times I've dropped these things in my garage floor and had to try to find them. <laughs> it's a pain in the butt. Yep, just get everything nice and clean. Wipe it down. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, <clears throat> if you're going from grease to oil, I'd recommend that you uh, clean everything really thoroughly. That way you don't get uh, grease uh, stuck in the mixture with all the oil. Uh, it'll just cause inconsistency in the diff and you don't want that. So, but. Uh, I'm not going too thorough since I had oil in it already. I'm just doing it for clean sake. But I don't want to take too much time because I don't want to bore you guys. Get off there. there so wipe everything down. Okay. <clears throat> I'm also going to just clean out the inside of this diff a little bit. It's really, really gross. And over time, as you're racing and stuff, just no matter how well you think you seal these things, they just get disgusting and gross and there's really not much you can do about it but other than rebuilding it. <clears throat> is that a bearing? No. <laughs> For a second I was like, is that a bearing in the bottom of that? It could be. 
but it's not. <coughs> okay, clean enough. That paper towel is wasted. <coughs> All right. Now this is the top part of the diff case. It's a really thin piece of metal with uh, another gear on the top. Um, under this is the exact same setup as you had in the bottom. You have that little uh, little cross pin. Once you put the out drive in, there's a little cross pin in the bottom of that. Same idea. So I'm actually going to leave that the way it is. I don't need to take that apart. Sure. Actually, you know what? I will anyway because I just want to put some more of that associated green slime on that O-ring just to make sure it doesn't doesn't leak any because the last time I took this apart and rebuilt this was probably like two months ago so it wouldn't hurt just clean all, clean all that nasty goop off there you know it's actually a good idea to leave some diff oil on this little blue shim that's in there because when you crank this down on the case it'll actually kind of help seal it a little bit uh, makes it like sticky you know so you can actually you don't don't want that totally dry. Uh, O-ring still in there though. I need to pull that out. There we go. Clean that off. Okay. Got one more set of spider gears to clean real quick, and then we'll be ready to start rebuilding it. So I have decided to go with 3,000 weight oil for this rear diff. Uh, I'm running five in the front, five in the center, and I'm going to do three in the rear. Um, doing lighter in the rear will help uh, let the rear end diff out sooner, so you'll get better um, mid-corner turn in, I guess. The rear end sort of wants to kick out a little bit when you run lighter in the rear. Uh, especially if you're like me and you're a real aggressive driver and you're on power a lot, the uh, giving up just a little bit of gas on in the middle of a corner will help kick that rear end out just a teeny bit, but still be controllable. That way you can uh, get nice good speed off of the next straight. Okay, so I've got everything taken apart. And I'm ready to go ahead and start the rebuild. So I'm going to get my green slime ready and my first O-ring. Okay, so. In the bottom of the diff case, there's a little recess where the O-ring fits in. I'm just going to squirt a bunch of this green slime in there and kind of smear it around. Which I need to clean it out a little bit better. I think that ought to work. Alright. So, green slime. In we go. Nice, generous portions of that. This stuff's super cheap. It's just kind of hard to find. There we go. So I got a nice big blob of green slime in the bottom of that. Probably can't see. Yes, my camera's terrible at focusing. So anyway, once you got the green slime in there, take your O-ring, smush it in there. Kind of smear that green slime around it just a little bit. All right, then you got to take your out drive. Push it through the bottom. Make sure the O-ring stays down. It has a tendency to want to creep up. Okay. Then there's the little washer. This goes over the outdrive and then covers up the O-ring. Push that all the way down. Okay. And you grab one of your little pins and slide that through the outdrive. That's what keeps outdrive from falling out. If I can get it. Okay, it's not wanting to go in. Come on.
It wants to be a pain in the butt. There we go. Okay, make sure it's all the way through. There we go, okay. Now, in the bottom of these, these big gears, there's a little slit that the cross pin goes in, so just kind of drop that in there and wiggle it around until it seats down. There you go. Now that you've got it in the bottom, you can start filling it a little bit with oil. So here's my low C3000 weight oil. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of squirt it around the edges until it's flush with the bottom of this little spider gear. Don't fill it all the way up to the top because you still got to put your cross pins in. Just a little bit is all you need for now. Okay, that ought to do. Okay, now you need to <clears throat> put the spider gears back on the cross pins. Make sure everything's facing the correct direction. Okay. So just keep in mind each one of these cross pins. Focus. <laughs> Come on, camera. There we go. Each one of these little cross pins has a little notch right in the middle of it. Just make sure when you put them back in the case um, that the two notches line up together. So basically the uh, see how it takes up half half the width of this little cross pin just make sure that they're inside each other. Alright so I'm just gonna set that in there. Oop. Lost one of my spacers. Alright. Set it in there and then I kinda push it down with my index finger and I rotate the outdrive until those spider gears get set into place right and make sure on the bottom cross pin that that little gap god my camera's terrible I'm sorry it's so blurry guys um, make sure that little cut out in the cross pin is facing up because the second one you put in is going to be facing down Okay, there's one Okay, second cross pins going in. Try to get it in there. Rotate the outdrive until it seats where it's supposed to. There we go. And both cross pins are in the way they need to be. So now you can start filling it with a little bit more oil. <clears throat> So just kind of work through all of these sides here. So I get this closer to the camera so you guys can see it better. Focus, please. Come on, camera. <laughs> A little bit more. There we go. Okay. So just start filling up the diff. Now you want to go until the oil is kind of level with the top of the cross pins. Once it's there, okay, that ought to do. It's kind of level with that top cross pin there. Once you got that, now you need to reassemble the top piece of the case. Ooh, that's really gross. Clean that off. Okay. So same as the bottom, you're going to put some green slime in there if you've got it. If not, not really a big deal. I just like doing this. Put your green slime in there. There we go. Kind of smoosh it around with your finger a little bit. Grab your O-ring. Pop the O-ring in there. 
you know what? I'm probably just going to start manually focusing this camera because this thing is a piece of crap. I, I really hate how bad this thing's autofocus is. And it's not a crappy camera either. It's a nice one. Well, it's crappy because it doesn't autofocus right. <laughs> All right, anyway, I got my O-ring in there in the green slime. Now I'm going to put my out drive in like so. Focus on my hand, not the background, stupid camera. Please. Yeah, I hate this thing. All right, washer in, O-rings in, out drives in. I need to put the cross pin back through the out drive. I just realized this is already on 20 minutes. <laughs> Y'all are going to be bored out of your minds. Okay. Cross pins being pain in the butt. There we go. Put the spider gear back on top. There we go. All right. So now what you want to do, uh, actually before you put the spider gear back on, what I like to do is just take it and just kind of set it on the top of the case and sign it, kind of see where you're where the level of your oils are at. Now it's definitely not full enough yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop this off again. And I'm gonna add more, more diff oil. You want it so that when you put this little top spider gear in, that oil just comes through the center of the hole in this. There you go. That's pretty much right where you want it at. So it just barely comes through that hole in the center. Oh, now it decides to focus. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to add just a little bit extra in these corners just to make sure that everything's in there where it needs to be. And I can tell it already is. So, All right. So now that that's in there, I'm going to take the top, of the top of the diff, line it up, put it in like so. Line up the holes in the case, like so. Take the gear cover, put that back on, line up the holes. Can't really see. There you go. Start cranking everything back down. Once you've got it all cranked in, that's it. You're done. Just this is the big reason I like these HPI screws instead of the stock Losi ones. You can get enough torque on these two millimeter heads to get uh, get this diff case closed up really good so it doesn't leak. I'm probably gonna have to clean this off real quick so I can grab it well enough to this real slippery. Yeah. Can't even hang on to it. <laughs> okay. So don't crank them down until you get all four of them in there. Just get them in all the way. Last one. All right. <clears throat> now you want to crank them down. So just kind of grab it like that. Crank these babies down.
There you go. Done and done. Should be a leak free diff case. Freshly rebuilt. Feels pretty good. That's it. Thanks for watching, guys.